great God. My name is Benny Kelly, the associate pastor here. It's my pleasure to serve with Pastor Chris, the lead pastor, and the rest of the staff. I'd like to invite you to check in. Check in either on your Realm app or QR code. Also, we have a, um, what do you call it? A registry, a, a clicker, a way to come. What's it? Kiosk! Kiosk! <laughs> I feel like I was on password. <laughs> Kiosk is, is what it is. And I'm just so glad you're here. Please greet each other in the name of Christ. Good morning. 
name is Debbie Mooring Braga and I'll be your worship leader today. Please join me in the opening prayer and remain standing for the opening hymn. Hosanna, King of all, you reign over all. Reign in our lives, triumph over evil, and teach us to follow in your footsteps. Amen. Sorry. <laughs> Today is Palm Sunday, and I know many of you have palms in your hands already. And those of you who don't have palm branches in your hand, luckily God has given you two of your own that you can wave. <laughs> so I will suggest that on verse 3 of Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, everybody rave whatever palms you have in the air in celebration. So let us sing hymn number 278, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. donkey his name is Norman <laughs> and the, and they'll be there until 11 but we will go visit them during Sunday school okay it's Palm Sunday and we're waving palms to remember the very first Palm Sunday when Jesus came into Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago people were so excited that Jesus was coming they lined up on the streets to greet him and they were waving branches that they had pulled off trees <clears throat> they were expecting a king who was coming to save them and it was Jesus Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey Jesus chose a donkey you might remember other times in the Bible with a donkey 
Before Jesus was born, his mother Mary and Joseph were going into Bethlehem with the help of a donkey, and the donkey carried Mary. God chose a donkey. Later on, Jesus tells a story about the Good Samaritan, and there's a donkey in that story too. The Good Samaritan puts the hurt man on the donkey to carry him to get well. And on Palm Sunday, a donkey carries Jesus into Jerusalem. Jesus came to save us, and Jesus chose a donkey. Donkeys are described as being loyal and strong and peaceful and have good hearing and good memories. Donkeys can carry people and things. Donkeys serve. Palm Sunday is the beginning of Holy Week the time with Jesus and his disciples and the Last Supper and when Jesus dies on the cross. Christians celebrate that on Easter, Jesus is alive. One more thing about donkeys is that all donkeys across the world, whatever color they are, or even if their fur grows over it, they all have a cross on their backs. The donkey is the only animal who wears a cross. And if you look at Norman outside, you'll see it. Let's pray. Dear God, God, thank you for sending us help. Thank you for sending us help. For Jesus, Jesus, who came in on a donkey. And and who lives. lives. Please Please help me remember that you are always with me. Amen. Amen. All right, we are going to Sunday school right over that way. Brooklyn, is this yours? Please join me for the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture readings for today both come from the Gospel of Mark, Mark 11, 1 through 11, and 14, 3 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, 
And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Our second verse. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor, and they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone, why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Shalom. Shalom. Did you see the parade? The parade for Jesus? I'm sorry if you missed it. It was grand. All of the shouting and the waving of the palm branches, just like this one. There were shouts of Hosanna lifted up by voices of all ages big smiles on people's faces, and there was dancing. People you didn't know would grab your hand off the street and twirl you around. (sighs) You could hear all of the joyful shouting before you even saw the crowds. I was right there in the middle of all of it with the disciples. My name is Rebecca. My husband is Bartimaeus. We met Jesus outside of Jericho. Bartimaeus is the son of Timaeus, and about 10 years ago, he had an accident that left him completely blind. So the past decade has been really hard for us. He's tried to make a living and has asked people for help. And of course, our family has contributed where they could, but it's been really hard. So when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was coming, he had to meet him. He went out into the crowds, and he screamed out, My Lord, have mercy on me! And the crowds were pushing him and hushing him, but Jesus heard him. And he said, my son, what would you have me do for you? And Bartimaeus asked, teacher, could you make me see again? And Jesus was filled with compassion and he said, my son, your faith has made you well. And just like that, immediately his sight was restored. Bartimaeus was overcome. He was hugging strangers on the street and even doing this little dance he does when he was happy. Oh, it was amazing. And ever since that moment, we've been following this teacher, this son of David. Bartimaeus believes that he is going to do amazing things, that he will usher in a new kingdom. So I was really excited when he suggested we make the trip to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. We used to make this pilgrimage all the time, but we weren't able to since the accident. So I was thrilled when he suggested we come a few days early. I even had my sister come to take care of our animals so we could leave. And we wanted to spend extra time with Jesus and his disciples, the 12. We we came by way of Bethpage and Bethany. And um, near the Mount of Olives, two of the disciples went and got a donkey. And that's how Jesus came into the holy city. Not on some majestic horse like Pilate did, but on a donkey. And his followers, they remembered the words of the prophet Zechariah, who said, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you. Righteous and victorious, lowly, on the back of a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I believe 
that he is the one. And I think this Passover is going to be unlike any other. Not only will we be able to celebrate the past, our freedom from bondage and slavery in Egypt, but this is an opportunity for us to look towards the future, that we will be liberated by a Messiah who will usher in a new kingdom. I mean, people were throwing their cloaks in front of him just like royalty. Are you excited? Don't you want to come and dance with us? Please stand as you are able and sing with me, Lord of the Dance, verses 1 and 2. popular since 1982. It's madness because so many times a top-ranked team falls to a lower seed and it busts all the predicted bracket outcomes. Any of you filled out brackets? Anybody have it perfect so far? (laughs) So during March Madness there's great anticipation. Who's going to be number one? (laughs) Will it be one of the blue bloods who have dominated over and over? Will it be an unexpected victor victor who surprises the world of basketball? It's this type of anticipation that marks that first Palm Sunday. Will a new victor emerge? Will those in power be toppled down? Will this humble man on a donkey be able to turn the powers upside down? Is he the one for whom people have waited? Is it madness to think that the Messiah has arrived? Now, you know, there's another name for this crazy basketball tournament, the Big Dance. The Big Dance. That nickname came from the Marquette basketball coach, Al McGuire. He was known for wearing a very bright blue blazer to all his games. And when they were heading to the tournament, he told a reporter, 
you got to wear the blue blazer when you go to the big dance. So from then on, people caught on to that calling it the big dance. Now that particular year, unfortunately for me, Marquette was the champion by defeating <laughs> Carolina that year in the final game. So my friends and I had bought a whole lot of light blue paint because we were ranked higher than they were, and we didn't let the paint go to waste. There were a lot of little Tar Heels painted on, along the campus. Why would McGuire have called it the big dance? Because dance is fluid, it's passion, it's creative, it's expressive, it's as unique as its dancers. It can be joyful, likewise it can be sorrowful. Everyone is all in. It's where the players want to be. It's where the fans want to be. And it's where anything can happen. Palm Sunday, the big dance in Jerusalem. It's where the pilgrims wanted to be for Passover. It's where Jesus and the disciples wanted to be. It's where the people who yearn to be saved wanted to be. And it's where it seems as if anything can happen. But the big dance is bigger than what's happening in Jerusalem. It's Jesus' entire mission. Jesus is Lord of the dance. Sidney Carter wrote the words to Lord of the dance that we sung earlier. He explained, I see Christ as the incarnation of the piper who is calling us. He dances that shape and pattern which is at the heart of our reality. Methodist pastor Andrew Sales explains that Lord of the Dance is a title of God that is often neglected, even though it fits him to a T. At Bethlehem, he dances into the world, Sales says, so that he may bring the crashing, clashing, clod-hopping humanity out of its confusion, back into step, back into joyful harmony, back into unity with God and his creation. Jesus came with a mission from the creative dance of creation to the calculated dance with the religious elders Jesus danced to show humanity how much God loves God's people, all people. Jesus danced steps that were unfamiliar and he invited those ready to dance a new dance to follow him. He danced healing steps. He danced compassionate steps. But the Pharisees and the scribes and the elders chose to stay off the dance floor. They chose rather to want to cancel the dance. The third verse of Lord of the Dance so clearly shows the turn from Palm Sunday celebration steps to what could be considered a funeral dirge. We're now going to sing that third verse. to what appears to be utter defeat. Again, the dance steps, the plan that Jesus focused on was to show humanity how much God loved them, 
to be willing to go to any length to show that. For God's love cannot and will not die. Jesus knew the reaction of the establishment. They couldn't have a rabbi creating such conflict within the ranks. They couldn't have someone who danced on people's toes. They couldn't have people believing this heretic was the son of God. It was blasphemy. These leaders were not in step with Jesus. The people, realizing that this so-called king was not the divinic king with power and might they expected, they ultimately couldn't dance the steps of Jesus either then. And the Roman powers, they couldn't tolerate the potential of an uprising caused by a fast and furious quick step or the slow, steady waltz of truth. This rabble-rousing dancer had to go. In Mark 14, we read about a woman who poured out expensive perfume onto Jesus' head, symbolic of anointing a king, and yet symbolic of anointing someone before burial. The jar was made of alabaster stone, one of the materials used in constructing the temple that Solomon built for the Lord. When asked, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all of this, Jesus answered, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. It sounded like madness. How can this happen? Jesus was referring to the fact that although his body was to be crucified, he would be raised in three days. The pouring out of that perfume was a sign of preparation for this miracle. She poured out what was so very valuable to her. As I read and studied that scripture, it made me ask, what are we willing to pour out for the one who has given us everything? For the one willing to sacrifice his life that we might have life? What are we willing to give Jesus to recognize with gratitude the gift of conquering sin and death for us? At my daughter Karen's wedding, her sister and brother-in-law were a mesmerizing pair on the dance floor. I haven't seen anything like that except on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> they met in ballroom dance class. Neither had been a, a, an exceptional dancer before, but they decided they would go to ballroom dance class. They didn't know each other. They met there, it all clicked. They went through more and more classes, became dance instructors, and got married. They knew each other's movements, and she glided along with his lead. It was so awesome. It, said, it is said that excellent dance partners look like they are joined with an invisible string. As we move through this holy week, are you ready to join Jesus as if you are joined with an invisible string? In this second to last movement of the dance, feel Jesus' outrage at greed and hypocrisy. Hear his teachings of what love really, really means. Show hospitality to others, putting others first. Try to stay awake to pray into the night. Run your hands along the grain of the wooden cross and hold the nails in your palm. See the blood that is poured out that we might have life. If we just go from happy dance steps of Palm Sunday to happy dance steps again at Easter, we miss the sacrifice. We miss the reality that God was willing to come and experience all of this in Jesus. We miss the intensity of 
the sacrifice. I've been to dances where people sit on the sides. The music is playing, and you look, everybody's just around the sidelines. You ever been to a dance like that? Certainly if you went to an eighth grade dance. <laughs> it looked like that. So if you ask somebody, you want to dance? They say, I don't like this song. I feel stupid. I can't dance. Or, oh, I don't know what happened, but now my feet hurt. <laughs> okay, those can be legit excuses sometimes. Maybe for that eighth grade dance. Maybe for homecoming, but certainly not for prom. You, you gotta go dance at prom. Anyway, friends, those excuses won't cut it for Holy Week. And Jesus is standing there with an extended hand, asking you to dance with him, asking you to trust him, asking you to let go of control and let him be the lead. It's a hard dance, the dance of Jesus. In March Madness, anything can happen. We've seen it. Number one seeds can get knocked out of the bracket. Number 12 seeds like JMU bump out number five seeds. Okay. I was waiting. I'm like, come on, I set you guys up. And some basketball programs only make 14 points and a half. Back to eighth grade, perhaps. <laughs> In the madness of Holy Week, it can be hard to see how love will win. How can we be saved? In the madness of the first part of Holy Week, it appears there's going to be an upset. A donkey riding rabbi, followed by cheering frogs looks to be able to bring a new kingdom into place, one planned and affirmed by God. Yet the ones on top, the number one seeds, they're going to keep their power. It looks bleak. It looks almost impossible for a comeback. How can love win? How's love going to win? Something terrible has happened. So much has happened this past week. I don't even know where to begin. Jesus, our teacher, was apprehended by the Roman authorities. I mean, one minute he's praying in the garden, and then the next in comes his disciple Judas with the crowd of chief priests and rabbis and scribes. Judas, his friend, betrayed him with a kiss, and then they took him. He was sent in front of the council to give testimony. They were looking for any reason to put him to death. There wasn't any even though people tried by making false testimonies, they sent him to Pilate anyway. He was stripped and whipped and beaten within an inch of his life. He could barely stand, and then they put a cross on his back and expected him to carry it to his own crucifixion. It's such a mess. Jesus asked my husband, what do you want us, what do you want me to do for you? Save us. Save us. But how can you save us if you can't save yourself? There will be no more parades. No shouting. No hosannas. No palms. 
just a funeral march to the hill on Golgotha. Where's the kingdom? Where is the dancing? Where? Please stand as you are able and sing with me verses four and five of the Lord of the Dance. No matter how tired, no matter how helpless it may seem, we are to follow our Lord as he leads us in the dance. For 12 years, Deep Run High School sponsored a fun, fundraiser marathon dance. Anybody here ever participate in it or have kids that participated in it? Yeah. The fund supported 12 charities across the region. Students danced for 27 hours. 27 hours! By the end, their feet hurt. They could hardly stand. Those young teens didn't feel so young anymore. <laughs> but over the years, they raised over $2 million to help people. Sometimes the dance that Jesus leads us in is clearly a happy dance. Sometimes it feels like the limbo. How low can we go? and still keep our balance and our values. But other times it will feel like the 26th hour of a 27 hour marathon. We will hardly be able to move one foot in front of another. Hardly be able to put one foot in front of another. But I want to encourage you. He will sustain you. He will hold you. It may seem bleak. It may seem hopeless. But I want you to trust. I want you to feel that invisible cord tying you to the master dancer. Let the Lord of the dance lead. It's March. Let's be people who expect the unexpected. Let's be dancers of hope. Let's dance. Amen. Friends, if you would receive and affirm this word into your life, let us stand together and affirm our faith as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. For centuries, musicians have been inspired to compose around today's anthem text. Kiri eleison, Christe eleison, Kiri eleison, which is Greek for Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy.
Friends, let's join in a prayer of intercession that was created by our neighbors in the Church of Scotland. Let us pray. Loving and Holy Spirit of God, hear our prayers. We believe that you want us not just to serve, but to pray for the world whose service you have called us to, and all its longing for peace, justice, and reconciliation. Hear our prayers today for those who struggle against tyrannies, those damaged by natural disasters or blight caused by others' greed, those forced out from their communities to seek refuge elsewhere, for aid agencies, peacekeeping forces, rescue services at sea, world organizations and alliances, national governments, and those offering a welcome to those seeking home, asylum in our towns. If statistics are tears, the world weeps for release for so many, the dispossessed, the falsely imprisoned, the undervalued, the cruelly undernourished, the exploited, and the sick, the deeply anxious who have everything and yet nothing, those miserable in their comfort, longing for love to feel of value, may they and we travel with you to Easter. O Lord, in your mercy, we pray for these needs in our world and we lift up those concerns closer to home. In the ministries you've given us in our daily lives, would you hear us as we lift up silently or aloud the names of those in need? With these petitions, O oh God, we give thanks for saints and martyrs through the centuries and the many people forgotten by us but known to you who have challenged injustice like you do, challenged discrimination like you do, given voice to those unnoticed and unheard like you do, and helped us to create communities where all are valued and invited to the dance through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are thankful for the blessings God has given us. May our gifts be an offering of ourselves. This is our opportunity to place your offering in the offering plate or text SERVE to 73256 for a secure link to give. You may also give through Realm. We invite our ushers to come forward and receive the offering.
abundant love, we humbly thank you for your enduring faithfulness and mercy. Today we give you this offering that it may be used for your kingdom and your glory. Amen. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you still have your palms. Is that correct? Let's see them. You still have them? All right. We don't want to waste them. We want to use them again. Verse 4. Let's get those palms going. Our hymn is, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. Verse 4. We're going to use the palms. of our uh, church, we'd like to invite you to a Friday night service on Good Friday of Tenebrae. The reason I bring this up is because this is a powerful service, and it attempts to show, as Beanie said in her, her sermon, the intensity of Jesus' sacrifice. Because of that, it may not be appropriate for small children because it is a very powerful, intense service. So we will have child care, and we invite you to come. And uh, we hope that it's illuminating for you. All right, friends, if you're visiting with us today, we are happy to have you in this family of faith. We are glad that you are with us. We want to greet you more fully. Uh, if you would stop by the Welcome Center, which is the old table to the right on the way out, we'd love to make you feel welcome here and get to know you better. Wednesday night is the final night of our Wednesday night dinners, uh, the last night of class, and so make your reservation for dinner tonight. Uh, leave a message with Frank if you need to, or do that through Realm. Holy Week worship coming up. So Maundy Thursday, um, I will actually be in a costume. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, so... Come on out for worship that night for a family service. There'll be some hands-on ways that your kids can participate, and we'll just be using some creative ways to walk through that time. As Jerry said, we have Good Friday service as well the next night. There's an Easter egg hunt on Saturday. Please register in Realm or call the office. Also for Easter worship, we have sunrise out here at 6.30, breakfast to follow. We also have two um, services at 9.30, one here is traditional, and then the other is our modern service in the fellowship hall, and then ditto for 11 o'clock. Now go forth from this place as dancers. Dance on.
but make sure that Jesus is in the lead. Amen. Amen. Amen.